One day when sin was as black as could be, Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin, dwelt among men. My example is He. Well, living He loved me, dying He saved me, buried He carried my sin far away, rising He justified me, free me forever. One day He's coming back for glorious day. Suffering in anguish, despised and rejected, bearing our sins, my Redeemer is He. Well, living He loved me, yet dying He saved me, yet buried He carried my sin far away, and rising He justified me, free me forever. One day He's coming back on glorious day. Well, one day they left Him alone in the garden. One day he rested from suffering and grief. Angels came down o'er this tomb, keep virgin. Hope of the hope that my Savior is he. Well, leave it. Yes, God, he saved me. And buried, he carried my sin far away. And rising, he justified me, free me forever. One day he's coming back on glorious day. One day they nailed him to die on a tree, suffering in anguish and despised and rejected, and buried my sins. My Redeemer is He. Well, living He loved me, died He saved me, buried He carried my sins far away, and rising He justified me, keep me forever. One day He's coming back on glorious day. One day he rested from suffering free. Angels came down or his to keep vigil. Home of the hopeless, my Savior is he. Well, living he loved me, dying he saved me. Buried he carried my sin far away. Rising he justified me. I'm going to shout with the voice of triumph. I'm going to shout with the voice of praise. Shout with the voice of triumph. I'm going to shout with the voice of praise. Shout out to God for your victory. Hey, hey, give the Lord a shout of praise. And we are victorious 
and God is most high over all the earth. And Jesus has conquered, shame is defeated, the enemy is under my feet, so I will shout with the voice of triumph. Oh, For the victory, shout if it's set free, shout. Yeah, lift your voice and sing it out, shout for the victory, shout if it's set free, shout. All in the game, shout. Shout for your victory, shout if it's set free, shout. Yeah, said. Shout for the victory, shout if it's set free, shout. Oh, come on and shout for your victory this morning. Shout for your victory. Shout if it's set free. Shout. Yeah. And I will shout with the voice of triumph. this morning. We are triumphant in battle and we are victorious this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on and raise your hands and praise him this morning. He deserves all the praise and all the honor this morning. We come to praise you this morning, Lord. We thank you today, God, what you're going to do today, Lord. Your mighty, mighty work today, Lord, to perform today, Jesus. We just thank you today, God. We worship you today, Jesus. We come expecting today, God, to receive what you have for us today, Lord. We just thank you today, Jesus. Hallelujah. There's torn up pages in this book. Word to tell me I'm no good. Chapters that define me for so long. But the hands of grace and endless love dusted off and picked me up. Told my heart that hope. Jesus. 
Hallelujah. The Bible says that if it had not been for the Lord that was on our side, hallelujah. You know what? He is in our story, and he is on our side. Hallelujah. Let's give him a praise this morning. Hallelujah. You can be seated. So good to see everybody this morning. Hallelujah. Certainly welcome you to the house of the Lord. Let's make Brother Jason welcome as he comes this morning. Give him a hand. Good to have everyone this morning. Amen. And we're going to go into the tithes and offering portion of the service before we get into the word. Thank you for being with us here at Solid Rock. And how many knows God is so good to us? Amen. And it's something about, amen, that God can take, you know, little old us or let me speak for myself for a minute. Amen. And God will bring you from the lowest of lows and, and set you on the highest of highs. Amen. How many has God done that for? I'm not talking about money, honey. How many has God been good to in here? Oh, hallelujah. He said that we would be above and not beneath. My goodness, God is so good. How many know something about a meal barrel that never runs dry? Amen. Sometimes maybe we feel like we only have a handful of meal, but how many knows it's never ran dry? Thank God we're child of God this morning. How many, how many knows that? Uh, real quickly, I just want to encourage you, amen, remind you how blessed we are, amen. And The Bible said all promises of God are or yea and amen, and, and how many knows this morning, God don't lie, amen. He said that you would be blessed. In Numbers 23, 19, it says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither that he should repent. Hath he, hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken it, shall he not make it good? And I love verse 20 where he says, Behold, I have received commanded to bless, and, 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 and he has blessed, and I cannot reverse it. Hell can't change your blessings, amen. Circumstances can't change your blessings, amen. Amen. We think we're not blessed because, amen, our bank, our bank account's low, amen. I don't care how much money's in your bank account, amen. If you're blessed, honey, you're blessed. God will bless your $5 and make it 500 God will take your 20 and make it 2000 amen. That's the God we serve this morning. The offering takers are come. We'll get ready to receive. Thank you so much for being faithful in your tithes and offering. Amen. We not no thieves and robbers in here. Amen. We may not have a lot, but amen, what we do have, we trust God with. Reach your hands this way. Father, we thank you this morning. Father, as we sow into the kingdom of God, Father, I ask you to recognize and see. Father, I, I, I ask you, Lord, to send a rain upon those that with the heart to give. Maybe we can't give, Father, but we given. We given in faith, knowing that one day we can. Father, in what we do so, Lord, we handing it to you, knowing that you're going to bless us. You're going to bless our homes, our families, our jobs, our kids. Lord, we're going to multiply just as you did the, the two fish and the five loaves. Father, we know you can do it. In Jesus' name we pray this morning a blessing. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Here needs an answer to the questions, the fears, and the whys. Somebody here is desperate for freedom from the past, the chains, and the lies. Feel like you wasted so much time. I wanna move ahead, but you're still lost in line. Feel like you're running, will never end. And you will never win. But I don't know who told you you were not me. And I don't know who told you that you could not take it. And I don't know who told you it's time that you quit. But my God says wait. It ain't over yet. And I don't know who told you you would not make it. And I don't know who told you you could not take it and i don't know who told you it's time that you quit oh but my god said the way oh it ain't over yet and it ain't over till god says it 
it's over and I say this thing Oh, it ain't over yet And it ain't over till my God says that it's over And I say this thing Oh, it ain't over yet And I don't know who told you Yes, hallelujah And I don't know I don't know who told you not to take it, and I don't know who told you. Yes, hallelujah. Oh, but my God says, my God says, wait, it ain't over yet. Somebody here, oh, you need that answer, oh, to your questions. Your fears and your eyes, and somebody here is desperate for freedom from your past, your chains, and your lies. Oh, feel like you wasted so much time. I want to move ahead, but you're still last in line. Feels like you're running, we'll never end, and you will never win. But I don't know who told you that you could not make it, and I don't know who told you you would not make it, and I don't know who told you it's time that you quit. Oh, but my God says. My God says, just wait, just wait, it ain't over yet. And I don't know who told you, you would not make it. And I don't know who told you, that you could not take it. And I don't know who told you, it's time that you quit. Oh, but my God, my God, my God says, just wait, it ain't over yet. And it ain't over till God says that it's over. And I say that this thing, oh, it ain't over yet. And it ain't over till my God says it's over this morning. And I say that this thing, oh, it ain't over yet. And it ain't over till God says it's over. And I say this thing, oh, it ain't over yet. Say it now, it ain't over till God says it's over. And I say this thing, oh, it ain't over yet. Hallelujah! Just raise your hands this morning. It ain't over till my God says it's over. It ain't over this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I don't know who told you that you would not make it. And I don't know who told you that you were strong enough to take it. And I don't know who told you this time that you quit. Oh, but you see, my God says away. Oh, it ain't over yet. And it ain't over till God says it's over. And I say this thing, oh, it ain't over yet, and it ain't over till God says it's over, and I say this thing, oh, it ain't over yet, and it ain't over till God says it's over, and I say this thing, oh, it ain't over yet, and I don't That you could not take it And I don't know who told you That it's time that you quit Oh, but my God said the way Oh, it ain't over yet yet, And I don't know who told you You could not make it Oh, and I don't know who told you That you could not take it And I don't know who told you it's time that you quit. Oh, but you see, my God, my God 
God said to wait. Oh, it ain't over yet. And it ain't over till God says it's over. And I say this thing. It ain't over yet. And it ain't over till God says it's over. And I say this thing. Oh, it ain't over yet. And it ain't over till God says it's over. And I say this thing. Oh, it this morning, it ain't, ain't over yet, and it ain't over till God says it's over, and I say this thing, oh yes, it ain't over, it ain't over, it ain't over, it ain't over, till my God, till my God, till my God says it's over, it ain't over, it ain't over yet, and it ain't over till God says it's over, and I say this thing, oh, it ain't over yet, I say it again, it ain't over, till God says it's over, and I say this thing, oh, it ain't over yet, somebody here needs an answer to the questions fears and the wise and somebody here is desperate for freedom oh from your past your chains and the lies it feels like you wasted so much time oh you see you want to move ahead but you're still lost in line Oh, feels like you're running, will never end. And you will never win. But I don't know who told you you would not make it. And I don't know who told you you could not take it. And I don't know who told you it's time that you quit. Oh, but my God says away. Oh, it ain't over yet, and I don't know who told you you would not make it, and I don't know who told you that you just couldn't take it this morning, but I don't know who told you it's time that you quit. Oh, but my God says just wait. My God says just wait this morning. It ain't over yet. I don't know who told you you would not make it, and I But my God says wait, it ain't over yet, and I don't know who told you you would not make it, and I don't know who told you you could not take it, and I don't know who told you it's time that you quit. But my God says wait, my God says wait, it ain't over yet, it's not over this morning, hallelujah. And I don't know who told you You could not take it
And I don't know he told you he could not take it. And I don't know he told you it's time that you quit. Oh, but my God says away. Oh, it ain't over yet. And it ain't over till God says it's over. And I say the same. Oh, it ain't over yet. And it ain't over till God says it's over. And I say the same. Oh, it ain't over yet. And it ain't over till God says it's over. And I say the same. You would not make it, and I don't know who told you you could not take it, and I don't know who told you it's time that you quit. Oh, but my God says wait, and it ain't over yet. Say it one more time. I don't know who told you you would not make it, and I don't know who told you you could not take it. And I don't know who told you it's time that you quit. Oh, but my God, my God, my God says, wait, it ain't over yet. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on and give him a hand cup of praise this morning. It ain't over. It ain't over till my God says it's over this morning. It ain't over. It's not over till God says it's over this morning. To God closes that door. It's not over this morning. Hallelujah. Just give him a praise this morning. Come on, raise your hands and just praise him this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you today, God. We thank you today, Jesus. That you'll make a way today, God. When there seems to be no way today, God. You're making that way today, God. That's your promise and that's your word today. And we stand on your word today, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, because you're worthy of it all. Come on, raise your hands. Just worship Him today, Jesus. You're worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You Of it all, you're worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. Lord, you deserve the glory. Singing now, you're worthy, and you're worthy of it all. it all yes you are Jesus Hallelujah. for from you are all things and to you are all things Lord you deserve the glory sing it now you're worthy Jesus you're worthy of it all you're worthy of it all For from you are all things, and to you are all things. Lord, you deserve the glory. Because day and night, hallelujah. In day and night, night and day, let incense rise. Day and night, night and day, let incense rise. Day and night. Night and day, let incense rise. Day and night, night and day, let incense rise. And day and night, night and day, let incense rise. Day and night, night and day, let incense rise. Sing it now. Day and night, night and day, let incense
verá For from you are all things And to you are all things Lord, you deserve the glory Yes, Lord You're worthy of it all You're worthy of it all For from you are all things And to you are all things Lord, you deserve the glory And how great is our God Sing with me How great is our God And all will see How great, how great is our God singing now how great is our God is and how great is our God sing with me how great Mama. is our God and all will see how great how great is our God you see he's a name above every name Hallelujah. He's the name above all names. And he's worthy. He's worthy of my praise. My heart will sing how great, how great is our God. Sing it with us now. How great is our God this morning? He's a name above every name. He's a name above all names. And he's worthy, he's worthy of my praise. My heart will sing how great, just how great is our God. And how great he is this morning. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Let's sing it again. How great is our God? And how great is our God? Sing with me. How great is our God? And all will see. and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. The Bible says His greatness is unsearchable. Hallelujah. Let's all give Him a hand clap of praise this morning. Hallelujah. At this time, let's make welcome Pastor Keith. Give Him a hand. Well, He's a good God this morning. Amen. Let's everybody lift your voice and sing that one more time. Then sings my soul. Oh, yes. How great. How great. 
Can you lift your voices just one more time and sing it? And then sing my song, my Savior God to you. How great Thou art. How, How great Thou art. I know He's a great God this morning. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. God bless you. Appreciate the goodness of the Lord, this beautiful singing this morning. Tell your neighbor, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great. Oh, come on, sing it to him. I know he's a mighty good God this morning. Amen. He's a mighty, mighty good God. Give him another shout of praise, would you? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. God bless the beautiful snorted singing this morning, and it's to strengthen and to encourage us. Amen. And appreciate the goodness of the Lord this morning. Amen. Good to see everybody in the house of the Lord. Amen. How many glad to be in the house of the Lord? David said, I was glad when they said to me, let's go to the house of the Lord. Amen. So it's good to have Sister Judy back with us this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. It's good to have Sister Christie's Tell me again. I know, I know, but I can't remember. Gabby and if, yes, yes. Good to have her back this morning too. Amen. Hallelujah. Good to see Brother Harold, his family back from Florida. I guess it was happened in the hurricane down there. Good to have them back this morning. God, just a good God. Amen. His mom was down there in the path of that, but amen. Everything's good this morning by the grace of God. Amen. Amen. You may go to your Sunday. Wait a minute before you do. Just turn around and tell some. Boy, some of y'all was ready to head out of here. Y'all can go to your Sunday school. Wait just a minute. Just turn and tell somebody, say, good to see you this morning. You can go to your Sunday school. I brought a smile to somebody's face at least. Hallelujah. I pack these glasses around more than I use them and they get abused pretty good. Hallelujah. But God's a good God this morning. Turn around and just tell your neighbor, God is a good God this morning, would you? Come on, tell them again, God's a good God this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. He's a mighty good God this morning. There's a scripture in the Bible that says, I want you to go home. Jesus told the, the man, said, I want you to go home. I want you to tell your friends what great things God has done for you. And how many believes today that we should be telling people what great things that God has done for us? We're going to talk about that just a little bit this morning. And uh, somebody says, I'm backward. I don't like to share my faith. But uh, you can sh we can share a lot of things not even realize it, but if we ever shared anything in the world, we should share Jesus right now. How many believes that? And we should tell the world about Jesus this morning beyond our understanding. And um, there's some things that I just want to share with you that the Lord dealt me up on. And there's a, a lot of ways I can go with this. There's a lot of scriptures. But uh, I just want to share with you just a little bit. Amen. Of, of how the Lord took me into this. And there's so much in this. And I, I was praying this week and seeking the Lord on this message and when I was I, and I just got lost and I, I got it just kept getting deeper and deeper and deeper and I said Lord there is no end to there, I mean, there is no end to the goodness of God this morning there's just no end to it and uh, you know sometimes we as I preach the other night we play around that shallow water a lot we you know we stay that ankle deep or the knee deep and we we're good and we're satisfied there but my god there's a deepness in god that you just can't pass over this morning 
Amen. And, and I want to, I, I want to just uh, to show you some things this morning. And and I, how many of y'all have some struggles and trials and heartaches and hardships and and uh, and then there's a lot of things that you know mentally that we do. But here's the thing. Amen. God has blessed us. How many of us think God has blessed us? How many of y'all are blessed of the Lord this morning? And the main thing that you have to do even in those difficult times is you've got to say, I bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and all that is within me, I'm going to bless the Lord. How many of it's good to bless the Lord this morning? Thank you, Lord. I call that health. Amen. Hallelujah. God's good. Amen. Uh, if you'll go with me this morning, but first of all, I, I want to show you something. Go to Matthew chapter 12 and verse 25. Matthew chapter 12, verse 25 this morning. I didn't give you that scripture, but I want to I wanna bring that up there. Matthew chapter 12, verse 25. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them. See, there's something about even in the house of God, praising the Lord that wants to be suppressed. There's something about praising the Lord that people, or you think within yourself, what's somebody going to think, or how will I act, or, or ever what. See, I'm, I have a body, I have a soul that's in this body, and I have a spirit that's in this body. This body without the spirit is dead. You take my spirit out of me, and I'm dead. Amen. My soul is my likes, dislikes, different things. It's my human reasoning. That's not your brain, but it's your human reasoning. And you can reason yourself into something, or you can talk yourself out of something. How many's ever done that? Amen. So when you look at these things this morning, God gave you a body, and he gave you a body for a purpose, that he could live in your body. Your body, the Bible says in Corinthians, amen, that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. How many believe that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost this morning? Your body. That's why you should take care of it. You should, you should not do certain things to it. You should not put, put certain things into it. Amen. You shouldn't do certain things because your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. How many knows that this morning? Your body. Your body. Your body, this natural body is a temple or the indwelling place of the Holy Ghost. There's things that you shouldn't do to your body. Now, we've all been ignorant. I could use some more plainer words than that, but anyhow, amen, just plain old dumb. How many's ever been dumb? We'll stop right there on that. But anyhow, amen, but my body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. Now, a lot of times we don't like to teach that. We don't like to hear people preach that. Amen. We think our body belongs to ourselves. But your body don't belong to you. Your body belongs to God. Man. And God put it in your care to take care of it. Amen. And the Bible says that Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom that's divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself can't stand. How many's ever God just told you to do something and you stood there and you talked to yourself and you divided yourself and you didn't do what God said do? <laughs> well, what's somebody going to think? What's somebody this? What this? That? When you start reasoning against the Spirit, then this, the, the flesh of you, not your body, but the flesh of you or the mentality of you starts ruling your life. And it will rob you of everything that God says to do or to be participating in. Does anybody understand what I'm saying to you this morning? Amen. So, see, I'm a, I've got a body, I have a soul, and I have a spirit. And only the Word of God can discern and divide the soul from the spirit. Only God's able to do that. They're inseparable as far as me and you, but not with God. And we should never allow the flesh to talk to us and tell us or have dominion 
over ourselves when God says he should have dominion. Amen. Now, somebody asked me one time, they said, Brother Keith, can I pray for you? I, they said, I don't know if it's the Lord or not. I said, well, I'll tell you something. Now, I know there's a time for all things. I understand that. But here's the thing. Prayer doesn't hurt nobody whether God told you to or not. Amen. So if you feel like praying for somebody, you know, maybe you just whisper a prayer for them. Maybe you call them. Amen. Or, everyone, or maybe at, at, at when the God gives the opportunity that you bring somebody to the front. Amen. And have them prayed for. And the, you walk him back and the devil says, that wasn't God. Big deal. It don't matter. But if you ain't careful, the next time that God tells you that, you won't do it because you remember how it was the first time. Hope I'm helping somebody this morning. So here's the thing. If Satan can divide your house, you can't stand. That means you're this. You become, you become unstable. You become teeter-tottering. And the will of God cannot happen in your life like it wants to. That's why you need to know the voice of God above everything else to be obedient to the will of God. Can I get a witness in here? So tell your neighbor, we need to go tell somebody about the goodness of God. Amen? Uh, I didn't send Daniel the scripture, but we've got, well, Halloween's coming up, but uh, um, uh, Thanksgiving, then we got Christmas, and uh, I got a picture the other day, and uh, they had the, the, the nativity out there, and they had uh, Jesus in the manger. There's a babe there. Then they had Santa Claus looking over at him, and I thought, Santa Claus was nowhere in the picture. But see how Satan can run. It looks sweet. It looks innocent to people. But Santa Claus ain't got nothing to do with any of that. Can I get a witness in the house? That's how subtle the devil is to steal what really belongs to God. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good this morning. So let's go to the Word of God this morning. Amen. Chapter uh, Psalms 116 and verse number 12. Amen. Let's start in Psalms 116 and verse 12 this morning. Would you give God a great big shout of praise this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Amen. And the psalmist says it like this. What shall I render? What shall I give? What shall I do? Unto the Lord for all of his benefits towards me. How many of y'all loaded daily with the benefits and the blessings of the Lord this morning? Psalms 103 said he loadeth us daily with benefits. Amen. Loving kindness, tender mercies, salvation, deliverance. Amen. The goodness of God this morning. And amen. B back it up, Daniel. I want to go back over that. I want to, I want you to just read this with me again. What shall I render? What shall I give God? What what's what, what is this that uh, amen? How many knows that we give praise to people and we give honor unto honor and all this and and we should, amen. Somebody does something, we should thank them, we should respond to them. But how should I respond to the Lord for all of his benefits this morning. Amen. If you've got a husband or wife in here this morning, you're blessed of the Lord. Now, you men in here this morning that are married, amen, and have a wife, amen, the Bible says that you've got favor with God. All you women I see shaking your heads, not many men, but anyhow, you women are shaking. And you obtain favor of the Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, that doesn't mean that they're always on track, but still, we got the favor and the blessings of God. God gave you a helpmate. Amen. amen. Well, I don't have time to go into all that this morning, but amen. God gave you somebody to strengthen you, to encourage you, to help you. Amen. But what shall I render? What shall I surrender? Or what shall I do? Or amen. Uh, because, listen, when I realize what God has done for me, it changes me that I become something different than what I was. See, when God blesses you with something and you can realize the goodness of God, it'll change you from all time being negative, grumbling, mummering. Now, I know y'all know y'all don't do that. I'm preaching to the folk on the Internet there this morning. 
But anyhow, but here is the thing. When I can see just a little bit or a glimpse even of what God has. Listen, I'll, you can talk all day how bad things are. You realize how good things are? You got health. You got good looks. You should have stood up and raised both hands, son, because you ain't going to get that very often. Somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> I love you, man. But I'm going to say God is good this morning. You have the ability to get up and come to church this morning. Amen. You have the ability to make a choice what you was going to do today. That's the blessing of the Lord. You know that this morning? You, amen. Uh, I seen uh, with Brother Jason and, and, and uh, Janelle there. Amen. Brody coming this morning. We was doing something. He was he's been a four year old boy. Is that what what uh, old he is? Four years old. He was just been a boy. And and one, I think we was talking about that little mean streak in him. I said little mean streak nothing. I said it's that wide. <laughs> but he's been all boy, and that's a blessing of the Lord. He's a good kid, so amen. But you know, but still at the same time, amen. You talk about the blessing of, because you could be in a gutter somewhere this morning, sicker than a dog. You could have so many regrets today that you can't even count them. And you sit in the house of the Lord this morning. And sometimes, you know, I get used to my surroundings. I forget where I came from. Where'd you come from, Brother Wayne? The hog pen. Hog pen's a bad place to live. I don't care what anybody says. Anybody ever been to the hog pen? I've been there. I've lived there. It's not a good place. Amen. Hallelujah. You know why it's not a good place? Because you weren't meant to live in a hog pen. You was meant to live in the Father's house. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah right there this morning. And if you happen to be living in the hog pen this morning, amen, the word of God says there's a road home this morning by the grace and the mercies of an almighty God this morning. I said, there's a road home this morning by the grace and the mercies of God. Hallelujah. I'm just glad I'm not in the hog pen this morning. I'm glad that I'm blessed of the Lord this morning. Oh, I can sit down and cry about this or that, but I'm so blessed of God. Amen. Amen. I believe it was Brother Jack Cole, amen, had a great healing service one night under the Big Ten, a big crusade, and amen, there was a hundred, I think there was a hundred people that got in prayer lines for being crippled, and they wasn't able to, amen, some in wheelchairs, some in, on canes, and different things, that is all crippled, and amen, and a, a reporter the next day or so, amen, interviewed him and said, amen, there was a hundred people that got prayed for, and 98 of them only got healed, and the, there was two that didn't get healed, and they were focusing on the two, they said, what do you think about that, Brother Cole? He said, well, I don't mean nothing wrong by it. But he said, I've been shouting about the 98. Amen. Come on, somebody. You know, sometimes we look at the small percentage when we've got a whole blessings of God out here. Amen. Amen. Somebody shout the blessing of the Lord this morning. Now, what shall I render unto God? What will I give God for what God's give me? What can you give God after what God's give to you this morning? You know what God asked us for? He didn't ask for your gold, your silver. He didn't ask for, amen, for uh, anything. He said, love me with all your heart. Just love me with all your heart. That's one thing that I desire as a pastor, amen, of this church is, amen. And I'm not saying that we don't, but we would just love God more and more and more and more. Just love God. That when you get out of that car, somebody down off that road, they'll see your face and say, my God, look what they got. When you walk into Walmart, somebody look and say, man, you got something. I don't know what it is. They might not understand it. But, man, you got something. When you walked in this place, things just changed. You believe that can happen? I know it can happen. I've seen it happen. But what am I going to give God this morning? And I can stop there and never go, amen, amen, and never say anything else, another scripture. But what will I render to God? What will I give to God? What will I offer up to God this morning? Amen. I told you the story about a lady who used to come to Rowena, uh, Rowena down there, and she'd get up and testify every service. We used to have testimony services, a lot more we do now. And Amen. And she'd get up and say, I give the Lord my house. I give God my car. And I give God this. And Amen. And one day the Lord spoke to me and said, but she ain't give herself. She was still doing what she wanted to do. 
So one night she was testifying. When I, she got done, I said, Sis, have you given yourself to God? See, God's not wanting your car. He don't need your car. But God, needs, God wants your hands. God wants your heart. I got up Thursday morning. I believe it was Thursday morning. And I began to pray and I said, God, send somebody by my way that I could maybe help a little bit or that I could just tell them something of the goodness of God. And all day went by and nothing out of the ordinary happened. And I was sitting on the front porch and about 5 o'clock in the evening and a, a truck pulled in my driveway. And amen. And I'd never seen this guy before in my life. He came back with somebody else. Amen. The, the, gentleman, the other gentleman had, had left something in my house there. He left a coat. And uh, he come by to pick up his coat. And amen. And amen. This other guy, while he was getting his coat, uh, amen. Uh, uh, um, this other guy got out of the truck and he introduced himself to me and he began to talk. He said he had had cancer and a man three years ago and he got over it and then uh, he had come back with a revenge, uh, uh, with a vengeance and a man really he's going to die unless God heals his body and he began to talk a few minutes. He didn't know as a preacher. He didn't know as a preacher. He didn't even know as a preacher. Amen. Now I began to talk to him about the goodness of God and amen and he said where you go to church? I said right across that road right there. I said, I'd like to see you there. He said, I'll come. So, amen. And we talked about the goodness of God. And amen. I talked about what the things that God had done. And he knows some things about the Lord. Amen. But I said, before you leave, I said, can I pray for you? He didn't ask for a prayer, but I prayed for him. He got done. He leaned his head over on my shoulder. And he said, sir, you've done something that will forever touch my life. See, every one of you got that power and that privilege to do. And it may not happen spectacular. It may just be a smile to an elderly person that ain't had a smile or a kind word. Or at their grocery store at Walmart, pick something up out of their cart for them and put it on the counter. Can make all the difference in the world. You know that? You know that? Amen. See, see, we all got opportunity if we just... Begin to think about, God, what can I do for you today? Because I get so wrapped up in me, it's all about me. And I ain't got this, and I ain't done this, and I wish I had this, and I wish that. I'm still talking to people on the Internet up there, aren't I? Somebody shout hallelujah. And I, I get so wrapped up in me, and I'm praying, Lord, bless me, and Lord, I've got 14 cars, according to Brother Cook, and God, I'd like to have a couple more. Somebody shout amen. If I'm like Brother Sex, I can't wear but one pair of shoes at a time. Somebody shout hallelujah. You women got a problem. Bless your hearts. You got so many pair of shoes, amen. How many of y'all got shoes? How many of y'all ladies got shoes? Come on, raise your hands. And you have to go any, many, many, mo. Which pair will I wear today? <laughs> That's the goodness of God. Somebody shout amen. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Amen. I'm talking about the blessings of the Lord. Somebody shout the blessings of the Lord this morning. So tell your neighbor, what, what am I going to give God this morning? Um, amen. How am I going to respond to the blessing? And I like that word, amen. Uh, uh, it, uh, how shall I render or what kind of gratitude will I give God? Or Amen. What causes me to become, amen, a praiser? Amen. What causes me to, amen, have what I have? What causes me to act like I act? Now we're going to get real close to home here. Why do I? Woo! Why do I do that? Why do I, amen, talk about the way here. And, and some of y'all can talk to me sometime, and I listen, and it, it's great. And it can be, but amen, while you're talking, I'm getting me a message. I can get a message out of what you're saying. Not that I'm not paying attention to you, but amen. You know, here's the thing about it. God can talk to you in many ways if you'll let him. If you'll let him. Yeah. How many believes that? God will talk to you in creation. Amen. I got an acre the other day. How many knows what an acre is? I was, was going to bring it, and I wasn't sure, sure, sure what happened to my acre. And anyhow, amen. And uh, I asked somebody what that was. And I, uh, I think I asked Canyon. He said, um, that's an acre. I said, it is. I said, you know what else it is? I said, it's just a nut. Just a nut. But it's an acre nut. I understand that. But I said, you know what I see there in my hand? You say, you know what I see in my hand? I don't just see a nut. I don't just see an acorn. That's an oak tree I hold in my hand. If it's put in the right place, 
and the right amount of time, there's an oak tree in that. You realize what's inside you this morning? You may turn around and say, neighbor, you're going to love this one and say, you look like a nut. I know. I seen Leslie back there. I seen her love that. She loved that, Randy. I seen it. I seen it on her face. Amen. But you know what? But I'm glad I'm going to be a nut for Jesus. Amen. See, I look at that little acorn, and it's just a little, amen, just a small acorn, but there's a tree in that. There's a mighty oak tree. Give it time. Amen. And when you and I can see the goodness and the mercies of God, we will become something so mighty in the hands of God that the devil says, I can't move them, I, I can't touch them, I, and they're blessing everybody around them by the power of God. How many of y'all want to be a blessing to somebody else? Uh, Amen. When you walk in this church, uh, this is still a Pentecostal, tongue-talking, Holy Ghost church, and it's going to be that way by the grace of God to as long as I'm right here. Amen. 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 You know why? Because I've got something to praise the Lord for. I've got something to give unto the Lord. If you, amen. You say, preacher, I hear that a lot. But if I can look at the goodness and what God's done for me, David said He brought me out of a Maori pit, or out of a horrible pit, and out of the Maori clay, and He set my feet on a rock to stay. Brother, I was in a pit, and I was in a Maori clay, but He changed my life. And it ain't because I'm behind this pulpit that makes me vocal. It's what the Lord has done in my life. Sometimes I even forget, but I remind myself quickly of the goodness of God. How many God been good to you this morning? What shall I render? Amen. What is the benefits of God? Amen. What is the benefits of God? Amen. And here's the thing you say about your body. Go to Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. Amen. The Bible, the Apostle Paul said this, present your bodies. Paul wanted you to give your body to God as a living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is not something hard to do, not something that's unreasonable, but it's just a reasonable thing For you to give your body to God and treat your body as a temple of the Holy Ghost. Where you go, what you put in your body, how you treat your body. All these things. Can I get a witness in here? It's just a reasonable service. Can I get a witness in the house of the Lord? Amen. So here's the thing. I'm going to present my body. Amen. If I present my body to God then God can use me in a way that blesses somebody else. Sometimes I'll ask somebody, i say, you enjoy the services? Have they been a blessing to you? It's not, uh, I said, I, what I want to do is understand how God has blessed you. See, I, I, want, I want you, when you leave this house this morning or tomorrow morning or any other time you're here on Sunday nights, Wednesday nights, that you are changed by the goodness of God, the Spirit of God. Something in you, I think Brother Michael preached the other night about sowing the seed in, in the grounds, the good ground, the uh, stony ground, the hard ground, and uh, the thorny ground. But here, here, here's the thing with all this. I remember my pa getting up early of a morning when they had the garden. He'd get that hole and he'd tie that red bandana around his head. Amen. He'd go out there in the morning at 6 o'clock, 6.30. Amen. And he'd hold that garden out. And I asked him one day, I said, why do you hold it out so early? I mean, you know, we don't get up to, you know, us boys didn't get up to 10 o'clock in the morning at that time. And uh, 9 o'clock is what it would be. Amen. And because uh, we was a bunch of hoot owls, hoot owls all night. Anyhow, but, uh, amen, we had, uh, uh, never come a day, Daddy said, get up and go to work, boy. That was a rude awakening. <laughs> but my pa said this. He said, when you hold the garden of a morning, the ground's still cool. And when you pull up dirt around certain things and you get the weeds out, it will, you, you, you won't disturb the ground to dry it out more and pull hot, hot dirt up on the plant to dry it out. He said, you don't lose your moisture that way. Well, that didn't mean nothing to me then. 
Well, today it does. If we don't start thanking God early in the morning, after a while we pull that old hot dirt up around us. We won't shout as good as we did. When <laughs> Amen. But God's still good, hasn't he? Amen. Amen. So here's the thing. God's still good. Present your, everybody shout, present your bodies a living sacrifice. Amen. Go to Psalms 149, verse 3. We're going to talk about a whole lot of things this morning if I can get, if I can get going here. Is it hot in here? <laughs> Turn the fan on, okay. Let them praise his name. We're going to turn the wire just fan, okay? Start, start. Let them praise his name. Seth, you read that? What did it say? Did, it did. So when you do that, you're praising God. You're not, you're not doing it for Wayne. You ain't doing it for what Renee thinks about you. You're doing it because you want to praise the name of the Lord. So when you're up here walking around, you know what you're doing? You're praising the name of the Lord. If you Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and the harp. When I play that old tambourine, I'm praising the Lord. When you clap your hands, you're praising the Lord. Can I get a witness in here? We praise athletes. We stand and give them ovations. But I believe that my hands was created for more than an athlete. It was created for the blessing of the Lord. And I will bless the Lord with my whole body. That includes my hands this morning. That includes my voice this morning. Somebody ought to give God a great big shout of praise. Amen. Go to Psalms 107, verse 1. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give the Lord a praise in here this morning. What am I going to render to God? What am I going to render to God this morning? What am I going to give God this morning? Amen. Tell your neighbor, what am I going to give God this morning? David said, I'm going to pay my vows. But listen, oh, give thanks unto the Lord for what is God. For God is good. He ain't good sometimes. He ain't good when I'm all good. He's good all the time. Can I get a praise in here this morning? God is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Uh, amen. In the original, it says it like this. Uh, oh, give thanks unto the Lord for his goodness. Uh, that's what God is. God is goodness. Uh, and every good and every perfect gift comes from above this morning. Amen. We have trials. We have heartaches. We have sorrows. Amen. We even have death. Uh, but God knows how to take all of that together and make something good come out of it that we can say, bless the Lord. Amen. And it ain't it stops right here in this life. I'm going to live somewhere forever and ever and ever. And through my sorrows, I know the Lord more. I don't, I don't quit serving God. I, I, I don't abandon God, amen, when I'm hurting so bad. I may not feel like shouting my shoe heels off, but I just draw on closer to God and say, God, thank you, God, because if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be doing this good today. Man, God, if it wasn't for you, I could be standing right now, Lord. Amen. God, if it wasn't for your mercies this morning, where would I be? God, what if you give me what I deserve? I hear some people, you know, tell God, God, I deserve this. Be careful what you tell God you deserve. Somebody shout hallelujah. I've heard preachers say that, you know, you deserve this and you deserve that. Listen, folks, I know I'm a child of God and I know all these things. But amen, I didn't deserve the goodness of God. I didn't deserve the mercies of God. I didn't deserve the forgiveness of God. I've done nothing to deserve those things. Now, I know we all think we're good sitting here this morning. And I'm not trying to bash that. Amen. But you've never done one good thing to, uh, to get God's mercies. God loved you because he is good. And he looked at you and said, I'll, I'll use you. In spite of you, I'll use you. Is that what God does? In spite of me getting in the way, God will still use me. Huh? Oh, give thanks to the Lord for his, his good, his mercy. endures. Everybody shout goodness. What is goodness? There's, the Hebrew word is hest. 
it has such a meaning that there's not just one word that describes it. The goodness of God this morning is his dedicated love. He is dedicated. His unchanging love. God's love doesn't change. If you quit serving God today, God's love won't change. If you point your finger in the heavens and curse God, his love won't change. Now, you'll change, but not God. If you blaspheme the name of God, his love won't change. Now, you do me enough wrong, and my love for you will change. Don't you sit there and say yours won't, because most of us can flip real easily. But how do I even love the unlovable is the love of God that's in me. Just me, my own personal, I like you, Brother Ronnie. Ryan, I like you, son. But you could get me where I did not like you at all. Some of y'all sitting there and stunned right now. You get somebody doing enough to you and you get where you don't even want to see them in the next county. That's true. But the love of God is the only thing that says, I'll forgive you. It ain't this flesh. Come on, somebody. And if you won't forgive people, you're still in the flesh and you're not in the love of God. Because you got to look at how miserable and sorry you was. And God forgave me of all of my sorriness. Am I preaching to y'all this morning? My low downness. I'll just preach to me. See, I only know you. I heard a guy talking to me a while back. He said I was a, amen. He said, man, everywhere I went, I caused problems. He said I smoked, I drank, I cursed, I did this. You name it, he said I did it. And I looked at him and said, I can't believe that. I don't know you. See, I, don't, I, don't, I didn't know that man. I've only known him since he's been a Christian. He was a preacher. I said, see, I only know you like this. But he remembers who he was. Not to the point of, of condemnation, but he did this because, amen. he said, listen, he said, if God can love me, God can love anybody. And I can't tell you why God wanted to love me. See, it's not that God says, well, Rachel's going to get better as she gets older, you know, and she'll say, she'll, she'll, amen, God said, I think I'll choose her. God looked at her before she's ever anything and chose to love you. That's beyond my understanding. God chose to love me. Now, if I got something to render to God this morning, if I got something to give God this morning, amen, when they sing about the goodness of God or any song that magnifies, have I got a right to raise my hand? Well, what's up? It don't matter what you, amen, it don't matter what you think about it. You should render to God because what belongs to God this morning. Can I get a witness in the house? Don't go there, Daniel, but I, w I want you to listen to this this morning. Amen. They're, uh, they're in the book of it's Luke. Amen. Amen. They asked Jesus, was it lawful to give to Caesar? Amen. And Jesus asked for a coin to be brought forth. And he looked at that coin and he told them Pharisees and Sadducees and those that wanted to find fault with him, he said, what inscriptions on this coin? And hey, they said, it's Caesar. He said, well, I'll tell you what you do. Amen. If something belongs to Caesar, you give it to Caesar. But what belongs to me, you should give it to me. Amen. I got to pay my bills. I understand that and everything. But I'm going to tell you something. God is doing something this morning. And if my job takes me away from God, then I'm giving it all to Caesar and nothing to God. If I can go to a ball game, if I can go out here to a car race, if I can go to, amen, to some kind of an event, I'm not knocking any of that. I go to ball games, amen, different things. But I want you to understand, if I can raise my voice and raise my hand and clap my hands and yell a little bit in a crowd of a bunch of people that don't know me, and if I can't go to church and say, praise the Lord, something's wrong in my life, and I'm robbing God of what belongs to God this morning. I believe when we walk out of here, when we go and eat somewhere or go home. Lord, bless this food. Thank you for this day. Thank you for the mercies. Give God what belongs to God this morning. And your life will change by that. 
How many believes that this morning? Your life will change. Amen, by the grace of God. Woo. Give it to God this morning. Someone shall give it to God. David, when he danced before the Lord there in... You don't have to go there either, Daniel. But 2 Samuel chapter 6, 14. I, I don't have time to go through all this this morning. David danced before the Lord with all of his might. David just didn't dance before the Lord. He did it with all of his heart. And somebody said, David did a worse sin than Saul did. And he did. Saul just seemed to disobey God. Wouldn't follow his line. David killed a man. Took a man's wife. David done some pretty bad things at one time. No, amen. David didn't cut no corners for himself. But God forgave him and kept and keep the kingdom. And he took it away from Saul. There's, there's one main thing that's the difference between Saul and David. David still had a heart to repent. And Saul would never repent. He had always blamed somebody. Anytime you blame people for all of your problems, you got a problem. And raise your hand and say, the problem will be me. Amen. Amen. If the teacher sends a note home with your kid, amen, and everybody's telling you your kid needs to, needs to do something or straighten up or something, well, it ain't my kid's fault. No, it probably isn't. It's yours. Somebody shout amen. amen. Well, that went over pretty good. But it's still the truth. Yes. Amen. Now, I know you married a husband. I know you married a man. And that man sometimes is great as he can be. And sometimes he can do the dumbest thing. <laughs> Some of you poor men look at me going, And you women are enjoying it for a moment. <laughs> but let me tell you something. When you've got an unconditional love, you'll love that old guy and say, that's my man. Amen. 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 You wish he'd quit some things or maybe there's something. I've told you, if I've told you once, I've told you a hundred times, leave them shoes at the door. <laughs> They're hard to get off your feet sometimes. Somebody shout amen. amen. But God's still good. Amen. And Sister Debbie, you'll still fix him dinner with his shoes on. <laughs> now take them feet outside with them shoes on, eat your dinner. <laughs> but other than that, you're okay. <laughs> I know that God's still good. Now, these folk don't do that. I just sort of put my version in. How many of y'all ever put your version in there? David, when he danced before the Lord with all of his might, David opens a window for us to see. I wrote this down. I want to make sure I say it like I, I, I got it that day. David just opens a window for us to see what it truly means to surrender to God in worship. David opens a window for us to see him being the king. Begins to dance down through there with the Ark of the Covenant following him. He dances so hard that his wife looks out the window and despises him. He said, you shouting down in front of all them maids. You're belittling yourself. David said, you don't understand. I'm not belittling myself. This ain't about maids. This ain't about Israel. This ain't about nothing but me and God. And when you worship, it'll be between you and God. If it's just stand there with tears streaming down your cheeks. That's the way some people worship. Some people are very emotional, high strung. Some folk just, amen, but don't let nothing rob you of robbing God of what belongs to God. And it will cause a church to bloom and blossom. 
And when a sinner man that don't know nothing about God, when a sinner person or a family walks in here and they know nothing about God, and we're a little wild, maybe we'll say to them, amen, but they'll feel so, they don't understand why you do what you do. But they can get drunk and carry on and carouse, and, amen, and they don't see nothing wrong with that. You know what I'm saying? But they see you, amen, doing it for God, amen. But here's the thing. They will feel something in their heart. They'll feel something in their spirit, not in really their spirit, but they'll feel something in their soul that they have people's got something I wish to God I had. Look at their faces. There's a peace about it. There's a joy in their life. See, when I realize what God's done for me, oh, I got problems. I have things I have to fight just like you do. Mine's one thing, yours may be something else. But yet I struggle at times my own self. But yet at the same time, when I see what God's done for me, I've got to praise the Lord. I've got to give God something. If it's in a dance, amen, amen. Come here, brother, amen. There ain't nobody can dance, uh, amen, dance like Brother Seth. That's the truth. Sometimes I get hungry to see it. Brother Buddy, you ought to see how he used to shout. Amen. When we had Christian school, all them kids, Jeannie, Leisha, Robin, uh, PJ, oh, they, they had everybody down pat. Brother Buddy used to shout stiff-legged. I do not know how he shouted. He never bent his knees. He never raised his knees. He shouted, I don't know how he done it. I ain't going to try it now. I'm not now. <laughs> I'm going to shout amen. I want to be able to be function the rest of the week. But God's still good. And th these are the blessings of the Lord. Some folk run. Amen. Some folk, you know, Sister Phyllis, she'll take off a running. Amen. Awesome. That's the goodness of God. They're just expressing what God has done for them somehow. Now, uh, if you stand at your seat, I'm not saying you're not expressing that. But we all should express the goodness of God somehow. A smile on our face. Good, good to have you here. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. You see a visitor, you, you make them feel like that they're so welcome, that they're part of the family. And you know what? You've done exactly what the Lord wants you to do. That's worship too. You know that? When you feel like calling somebody and checking on them, if they'll answer their phone, somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. God's good. I don't say God is good. Amen. And I'm not, see, I'm not setting a certain present, a certain way that you've got to worship God, but everybody should worship Him. And why are you going to give God what God's give you? God's give you a, a beautiful family, a beautiful wife, beautiful children. Amen, except for one. But anyhow, God, they're still, amen. God's working on them. Somebody shout. <laughs> Take your choice, Braxton. I love Braxton. I love to aggravate that boy. I love to aggravate him. Amen. And then there's KK and there's Riley. And uh, well, that's, uh, yeah, let's. She ain't in here, so we can talk about her. She'll never know it unless y'all tell her. But anyhow, but God's good. But how many know she's a good kid, too? Amen. She's a good girl. But I like to aggravate her. Amen. But how many know that God's good? How many that God is good? And what I give God makes all the difference. Now, am I going to bring God something left over? Am I going to give God something that's done got mold growing on it in the refrigerator? I got, a, I got a friend of mine who used to work on the farm. He's dead and gone. His wife worked at the bank. And amen. And one day he came home for lunch and didn't see anything and looked in the back of the refrigerator. And there was a little one of them little top of wire bowls and had aluminum foil over top of it. And he got it out and he tasted of it. And it tasted good. And man, he ate all that. He just ate it. It was good. Amen. And he, she came home that season from the bank. And amen. He said, well, what was that? It was in the back of the refrigerator in that little green bowl that uh, had that aluminum foil. She, he said, uh, she said, why? She said, he said, I ate it for lunch. It was good. She said, you ate the cat food. <laughs> well, if you hadn't have told him no different, he'd give him praise. Thank God for the food. 
If you look at a can of cat food today, you'll have to thank the Lord for it. High as it is, somebody shout hallelujah. Thank you, brethren, this morning. Amen. But has God give you two good hands this morning? Has God give you two good feet this morning? Has God give you a heart, amen, that wants to please him this morning? Amen. Somebody ought to give God a shout of praise. Amen. Go to verse number two, Daniel. I give thanks to the Lord for he's, amen, he has read. Look at this. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. How many of y'all been redeemed this morning? Whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. How many this Amen. God has said, make a declaration. Let the world know you have been redeemed. Amen. You have been bought back from the hand of the enemy. The enemy had you in bondage. Sin had you in bondage. But God redeemed you. Now, sometimes we mention it at Christmas or Easter, but we don't talk much about our Redeemer. We talk about our Lord, our Savior. Our shepherd, and those are those are all around. But he is a redeemer also. He redeemed. It means he purchased. He had to pay something for you. You just didn't come this way for nothing. There was a price paid for you. Somebody shout, there's a price paid for me. There's a price paid for you, church. There's a price paid for you, sis. And when you feel when you feel tempted to do something that would displease the Lord, and amen, you stop and say, wait, wait just a minute, wait just a minute. They tell you when you get angry to count to ten. One, two, three. Most of us forget. Somebody shout hallelujah. I'm so mad I forgot where I'm at. But you know, if you'll stop and just count, you won't do what you stop, count to ten. I, 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 that's good, but I say, if you'll just stop and say, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's a good one. Thank you, Jesus. That's a good one, isn't it? When you want to, when you, when, you, when you can't take no more, thank you, Jesus. Let the redeemed, everybody shout, let the redeemed. What am I going to give God for his goodness, his mercy? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. God's goodness is expressed in his mercy towards those in misery. Man, if you're miserable this morning, God can show you mercy, change your mis- misery into joy. Now, sometimes we get a false expectation that look at so-and-so, they're just always happy. They're all, they don't, and I struggle with what I feel inside, they'll say. I don't feel like them people feel, and that makes me feel like I'm not what they are. We all feel those things sometimes because you have the soulish side of you that's got those five senses. You've got those emotions. And your emotions will lie to you. Your, or let me put it like, your feelings will lie to you. How many of you ever had your feelings to lie to you? They'll lie real good to you. They will. Amen. So you have to know something above your emotion. When my emotion says this and my feelings feel like this... But God, you've been good to me. It don't matter how I feel. I've been redeemed. It don't. See, God doesn't change. The things of God doesn't change no matter how you feel this morning. There's folk that are hurting. They've lost their loved ones. There's folk that have lost their loved ones uh, maybe a year or two ago, and they're still dealing with, with certain things of that. Nothing wrong with that. Those are emotions. Those are human feelings that we have. But we cannot let them govern our walk with God. Amen? We cannot let them govern our walk with God. God's word is greater than my feelings. Because my feelings will change. My emotions will change. How many believes that? Some of y'all don't believe that? Your emotions will change. Your feelings will change. You can cry today and laugh tomorrow. You can rejoice today and be in sorrow tomorrow. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's just a basic human uh, instinct of us. But yet at the same time, there's something greater called the power of God that lives in us this morning. Can I get a witness in here? Everybody shout, God's goodness is expressed in his mercy. He said, come unto me, all you that are weary. Come here. Come here. You're supposed to come to God. Say, God, I'm having a hard time. I'm struggling. 
most young guys my age. Got a big career, making good money. Ever what? I don't know what yours is, but I'm just using this. You come to God and say, God, but I love you. And God, I know you still got a plan for me. And God says, now God ain't going to make you a baby. God ain't going to make you, amen. But God said, now, son, tell you what I want you to do. Turn around, put your hands on the plow, and go to work. You might not like, you might not go make a fortune driving a dump truck, but drive it till you, the next thing comes along. Amen. Can I get a witness in here? Amen. Amen. If you can't find, I don't know if you got one right now or not, but go see Brother Jim. He'll put, he don't pay nothing, but man, he'll work you good. <laughs> So what Junior Crowhorn done come out that day and helped me with them trees up right here. Brother Jim was out there and I pulled up and he said, what are you doing? Getting people out of the nursing home to work for you now? <laughs> when the evening come, Brother Junior was wanting to go to the nursing home and Brother Jim was still working. <laughs> That's the truth. I'd like to work them to death. I'd like to work us all to death. But I'm say God is good this morning. Everybody shout God's goodness. Is expressed. In his patience for those that deserve judgment. How many ever deserve judgment? I mean, God should have just jerked you up and blistered you real good. And God said, I ain't going to do that today. I'm going to show him such love and such compassion. Now, you can fight me if I'm angry with you, but you can't fight me if I'm telling you, it's okay, I love you. Just don't worry about it. It's hard to fight that, ain't it? That's the love of God. Amen. Had two preacher friends down a little part of town. Had a little storefront church. There, had, opened it up, had a revival in it. This little gang down through there came down through there and said, Now, preachers, if y'all come here tomorrow night, we're going we gonna to whoop you. We're, we're literally going to whoop you and run you out of town. Well, the two preachers showed up, and uh, they had their service. And there was a gang waiting on them after service. The one preacher got up and said he was ready to fight. He was angry and upset. The other preacher just tapped him on the shoulder and said, Son, said, listen to us, listen to us. Walked over to that gang leader. He said, Son, he said, Now, I don't know what your problem is. He said, Now, we've done had our service. We're going home. There ain't nothing to fight about. Let them go. Amen. God's good. While I'm telling y'all, it's a good story. I'll tell you one more. This real elderly lady, a widow lady, she was up in her late 70s, early 80s. She went to church one Sunday morning. She looked at the pastor and said, Pastor, I'll give the church $1,000 if I can pick three hymns. He said, well, I don't see nothing wrong with that. Said, uh, okay, you can pick three hymns. She said, I want him, him, and him. <laughs> Anybody got $1,000 this morning? <laughs> but God's good. Somebody said, God's still good. God's still good. I thought that was funny when I heard it. <laughs> Maybe I'm simple-minded. I don't know. But let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Have y'all been redeemed this morning? Have you been redeemed this morning? Have you been redeemed? Yes. Daniel, go to first, uh, amen. Let me just go there. Go, go to 1 Corinthians chapter number 6, verse 19 and 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 19 and 20. What know ye not that what? Your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in is that what it says? Yeah. The Holy Ghost ain't out there somewhere. It's in you. Which you have of God and you're not your own. Next verse. You are bought with a price. 
How many of y'all have been bought with a price this morning? Therefore, glorify, magnify God in your body and in your spirit. It doesn't say anything about your soul to that point. It's your body and your spirit. And the soul comes in subjection with your body and your spirit. You don't let your soul tell you everything you want, like, and dislike, and that I don't think this is okay for right now. You glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God owns your body and God owns your spirit. They both belong to God. See what it says? It's in your Bible right there. Look at this this morning. Amen. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 5. Look at this. Everybody shout, give God praise this morning. There is one God, one mediator between God and men, and the man Jesus Christ. Now watch this. Next verse. Who gave himself what? You know who ransomed you? You know who paid who redeemed you? You know who paid the price for you? Who paid the price for you? Not the world? Not the devil? Nobody else. Jesus paid the price for you this morning. To be testified in due time. We ought to tell the world that Jesus paid for me and I belong to him this morning. Amen. How many of the church ought to have enough life in it that we can tell somebody about the goodness of God? Tell the world out there. Amen. When you drive around McDonald's, let them look at you and say, you've been to church, haven't you? And I wish to God it would be enough in this church. Amen. When do God, they'll say, you've been down to Solid Rock. They ought to know you like that. Can I get a witness in here? I love you. Amen. Amen. I have an accent. We all got we, we don't know we have an accent because we listen to each other. But when we go in some of these northern cities or something or out of this uh, Appalachia region, and but if you're going up in the eastern part of the country, they, get, they really got that whang. You know, you know what part of the country they're from? The way they talk. We went to Florida one time, me and Brother Tom, and somebody walked up and said, uh, they won't know, uh, they thought we were somebody else. And, and uh, we said, no, they thought we was uh, the Burton brothers that does some racing or something. And we said, they said, uh, y'all got that kind of accent. And they talked, uh, somebody come up to Robin one time and said, they wanted to, want to know where Robin was from. They said, talk some more, we'd like to hear you talk. She got that wang. Y'all, yeah, y'all. Somebody shout amen. How many of say God gave himself a ransom for us? Look at this, look at this. Amen. Should we praise God? If the Lord saved your little boy, Macy, or if I or Brother Michael there or Brother Chris back there run out and saved your little boy out of the road, You'd be ever indebted, would you? Wow. I remember the, when we had the wreck and the, there was an EMT guy. He was going to Columbia in his own car. He wasn't even on, he wasn't working. He seen the wreck and he stopped, which I'm sure they're supposed to do that anyhow, I guess. I don't know. But anyhow, uh, he stopped and he came over. And he talked to me and uh, he shared some things with me. And... Um, then, uh, then one of the ladies, uh, when the ambulance got there, and and uh, and we got out of the hospital and we got home and different things. And I happened to see both of them at different times, but I went to them specifically and I said, "I want to thank you." In my moment of turmoil, you, you you gave me strength. You helped me. You helped me right there. And. When we were in the hospital and, and this church functioned like it needed to, that gave me strength that I realized it was a proper working church. That makes all the difference, folks. Somebody said, preacher, what you, I, had, I had got asked this one time. He said, when you, when, when you going to go somewhere? He said, if you do, I'll miss that night. I said, no, no, that ain't, that ain't time to miss. It's time for you to be at church. To hold up, hold up the church while I, I'm having to be gone. Right. Amen. Amen. Just had to clarify the <laughs> what's right and what's wrong there. Amen. 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 Watch this. 
See, when somebody's in trouble, let them know, amen, that we're praying for them. Amen. Go to 1 Timothy. Okay. Go to verse. Okay. He gave us a, okay. Go to Galatians 3.13. I got to hurry. I want to give you these scriptures. I want you to understand something. Galatians 3.13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. I know that Christ redeemed us from all the curses. Every curse that was against us, he redeemed us from them. I'm redeemed from the curse of poverty, sickness, and death. That's the curse of the law. Can I get a witness in here? I've got one more here on this one. Go to 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18. I've got a couple more things to say. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things. Look here. This is what God called corruptible, things that corrupt, things that perish, things that won't hold up as silver and gold. Those are the two most precious things, commodities in the world. And they're not worth anything compared to your soul. And they could not purchase your soul. From, as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by traditions from your fathers. Next verse, watch this. Tell your neighbor, I've been redeemed. But what have I been redeemed with? <laughs> the precious, the precious. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is thy flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Are you washed in the blood? Of the Lamb this morning. Amen. I was I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. How many been washed in the blood of the Lamb this morning? Hallelujah. I just didn't come down here and say, Lord, or I just didn't come here and make a church confession that I'm saved. I got the blood of Jesus applied to my life and I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb and Holy Ghost filled I am. Would somebody give God a shout of praise on that this morning? Come on, somebody give God a shout of praise. I've been washed in the precious blood of the Lamb. Amen. The Lamb that was with without blemish or without spot and that made me the righteousness of God. I am righteous before a holy God. A holy God that's holy and cannot change. Amen. When, he, amen. when sin come before him, he had to judge sin according to his nature because he's holy. But when I stand before God, I was a sinner but I got the blood applied and I'm a brand new creature and I stand before him and when he sees me he sees the blood. When he sees me, he sees that mediator uh, called Jesus Christ uh, my redeemer uh, anybody hear me this morning that ought to make every one of you want to get up and shout uh, I've been redeemed uh, by the blood of the lamb uh, I've been blood bought uh, I've been blood washed this morning somebody ought to give God another shout of praise come on give him a shout of praise this morning I believe this this is my opinion I speak to you as Wayne Keith. Paul said, I, there are certain things I speak to you, speak by permission. That when I get to heaven, and God opens the books, and he judges me out of my, those books according to my works, the only thing I will come up short in is I didn't praise him enough. When I had the opportunity to give God something, and I refused in my own human reason to either let it go by, sit on my seat, or something. And God will say, look at here. Of all the blessings I have lined up for you, and you never received them because you had never opened up for me to pour them out on you. Sister Ruby, one time, I said, God, I can't pray for her. She's a woman of God. She's been, she's, you know, she's just an angel. But, you know, I can't pray for her, but I did later. <laughs> Had a man of God come up to me one time. He said, he was an elder man of God. I thought highly of him. He said, pray for me. I thought, well, I, like you, I made me think of that. I finally laid hands on him and prayed for him. 
I felt awful when I walked away. Come back later and said, thank you. I feel better. See, you never know what God has to do. God can use your hands as much as he can use the great. God can use my voice like he does your Billy Graham's. God can use you just any way he wants to use you. If you're willing and yelling. Can I get a witness? How many wants to praise him this morning? Listen, somebody says, I can't witness somebody. Tell them how to get saved. I said, all you got to do is tell them what God done for you. What God done for you. Has God done something for you this morning? You may, still, you may fall and skint your knees, but you're still saved by the blood of Jesus. Can I get a witness in this house this morning? Now, here's the thing. Who, who, who baby you got? Savannah? Would she come up here? I don't. Uh, uh, w w would you bring her up here? Can she walk? Okay, would you sit her down and see if she'll walk to you? Is she shut? Could she fall? Can, can, can she fall? She won't fall. <laughs> walk, walk over this way, see what she'll do. Now, that's a lot of Christians right there. Here's some Christians here, all grown up, and we want to judge them like us. Can't do that. I may be teaching her a bad habit, I don't know. <laughs> Now, Brother Steve, bring yours up here. Whose is this one? Grandbaby also. I think you have, I think you could have but one. So I, oh goodness, come here. Now, here, listen to me. I'm not making excuses for nobody. There is no excuses for sin. But sometimes, when a person first gets saved, you got to give them a little mercy. Because they don't walk like you walk. Now, put that baby down and make it walk. If it don't walk, spank it. I mean, chew it out. Wouldn't that be foolish? Wouldn't that be the most foolish thing in the world? When you bring new Christians into church, here's what you do to them. I love you, baby. You're a good baby. And just keep working with it. Keep feeding it. It looks like a preacher. It wants a microphone. <laughs> But how many knows that they'll grow? They'll grow. Yeah. Just got to give them a few days to grow. Yeah. Give them a little opportunity. Put some, then after a while, after you've sucked the bottle enough, I'm gonna, we're going to wean you. Or use you. Go, I pick on him all the time. That's what you get for this front seat too. We're going to take the bottle away from you, and we're going to give you some strong meat. Now it's time to start growing. Quit whining for the bottle. Because you got to grow. If you don't grow, you, you won't make it. Is that good preaching? <laughs> I know that God's good. Now, we, we still love you, but there's a thing about it. You got to get off that milk. You, you need it when you get saved. But after a while, you got to start eating that strong meat. And so every now and then, that word will go open up. And you got to chew. You got to go home and chew it some more. Boy, he hit me hard today. That's called strong meat. Man, how do you know what I've been doing? Amen. Had a person walk to me a while back and said, "Have you got a Have you got a camera to my house?" I said, "No." He said, "You've been tell, You've been telling everything I've been doing." But God's still good. I was it God's still good. Amen. But how many of those God's a good God this morning? Let the redeemed. Let the Lord say so. Let what? Who's been redeemed in here? Amen. Who's been redeemed in here? Amen. Amen. And listen, folks. Everybody shout, I know the goodness of God. The goodness of God. I wish I had time to preach all this. Amen. Robin sung too long this morning. Blame her. Hallelujah. But God's good. The goodness of God. The goodness of God. As long as they come to the music. I thought Jason was, oh, there. Okay, there he was. The goodness of God this morning. Robin didn't sing so long. She has sung good this morning. Somebody shout God's loving kindness this morning. Now, as I close with this this morning, I could preach this right here again. 
when the prodigal son left all the good house. He knew better than to leave there. But he got that old soulish spirit. And he got to hungering for the world. Oh, if I can do this, if I can do that. If I can get away from this, I'll have it made. How many knows it follows you everywhere you go? He went down there and he wound up in a hog pen. And if he'd been up to Elder Brother, he had died in the hog pen. But the father was saying, come on home, son. And I was like, God wants you to come home. If you're lost in this building this morning, God wants you to come home. If you've wandered far, I love it, more songs. I wandered far away from God. But now I'm coming home. The path of sin too long I've trod. But Lord, I'm coming home. How many glad this morning you're home by the grace of God? Would you stand to your feet all over this building this morning and raise your hands towards heaven and say, God, I thank you for your mercies this morning. God, I thank you for your goodness this morning. Come on, can you thank him a minute for his goodness? That he brought you out of that horrible pit and that mauve clay. Can we just lift our voices and say, thank you, Jesus. God, for all of your goodness this morning. God, your steadfast spirit, God, that give me strength. God, I've tasted of your goodness this morning. Thank you for that loving kindness. God, because you love me so much that you gave yourself on an old bloody rugged cross that I could live this morning. Come on, just thank him this morning. Come on, just praise him this morning. Would you just for a few moments? Maybe you want to pray for somebody else that God would touch their heart or that God would touch you and that you would forgive somebody and release them and that you would try to restore your relationship with them, whether it be your marriage or your friendship or maybe a work-related problem or something. This morning, would you let God just touch you this morning? Would you let God move for you this morning? Because, Lord, I'm coming home. Keep playing it. Come on, would you just talk to the Lord just a moment this morning and let's pray for those that are lost their loved ones in the wreck last night. I got a pastor friend, Brother Eddie Lee, out in Texas. I was supposed to be in there this past weekend in a, in a camp meeting and wasn't able to make it. His wife goes into surgery Tuesday to take out part of her bowels and her colon. Very serious thing, but her name is Sister Amber. Amber, let's right now, let's take her to God in prayer and those families this morning. And if it was you going to have surgery Tuesday, ask God to touch them as you want to be touched this morning. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, for Pastor Eddie and Sister Amber, God, that there would be a healing in her body this morning. God, that the anointing of the Holy Ghost, God, would touch her body. God, they wouldn't even have to do surgery. God, I know there's a lot of people out there praying, but God, you're the healer. You're the one that reaches down and touches that this morning. God, those that's lost their loved ones in the accidents or ever how they may be this morning, God, give comfort, give peace this morning to a hurting, dying world. God, let solid rock break out in a praise that, God, that we would touch the hearts and the lives and, God, we would tell people the goodness of God this morning. Oh, God, and those that's been struggling, those that have been hurting, and, God, those that are ashamed of their skinned knees or, Lord, they feel like, God, that you don't love as much as you love somebody else. Just touch them this morning and wrap them in your mighty arms of love and, God, just show them that you love them this morning. And God, that they don't want to do that no more. And God, that there's such a conviction. God, that they will just want to get up and draw closer to you this morning. By the power and the spirit of the living God. Father, I thank you for it. 
I love you for it this morning. Anybody need prayer? Anybody needs to pray before we change this service? Come on, worship the Lord for just another moment, would you, this morning? We'll come in home. I just felt that song come in home. Never more. for Jeremy this morning touch his body Father by the power of the Holy Ghost God by the anointing of God touch him this morning God you have brought him this far Father by the anointing of the Holy Ghost God I thank you for it this morning God by the power of the Holy Ghost God your mercies that endures forever the goodness of God Touch him this morning. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Lord, I'm coming home. Go to Jesus. Turn around, look at your neighbor, and tell them. They're still powering the blood this morning. Will somebody give the Lord a shout of praise in here? Come on, give God a shout of praise. Come on, give God a shout of praise. Tell your neighbor I'm redeemed. I'm going to tell somebody. Come back to church tonight telling somebody. Look what the Lord has done. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.